Hello and welcome back, and that is right, today I want to return to the subject of building your own NAS from scratch, but this time, unlike other videos that I've done, with a slight change. Normally, I think it would be fair to say that the bulk of the videos that I talk about with building your own NAS, I focus a lot on these, MITX motherboards. These are motherboards that are designed to be considerably smaller, they allow for mobile SoC CPUs to more often not be included with them, they also allow you to use smaller chassis, or so at the very least use mid-sized chassis, and and allow for greater airflow. And although they do miss out on something such as generally only ever featuring one PCIe slot, and in some cases not even that, I think they make up for it by being a lot more efficient in terms of power consumption long term, and of course, that smaller impact footprint in your environment. However, there's no avoiding that MITX motherboards really do limit your larger scope when it comes to storage, when it comes to scalability. And that's why this video, we are going to talk about ATX. So we're going to talk about motherboards that I would use in an ATX NAS DIY build. We're not going to talk about the CPUs for reasons we'll talk about later on, and it's worth highlighting a few disclaimers out the gate. Number one, ATX is a very broad term when it comes to motherboards. Hell, you could really break down into PSUs if you wanted. But in the case of motherboards, ATX there actually comes in several versions. There's your micro, there is your mini, there's standard ATX and EATX. And as you go through those, they get bigger, or in some cases, in case in the E, get deeper. So again, we are going to talk about different kinds of ATX motherboard today, but keep in mind that ATX is not a blanket term. Uh, it's actually, there are versions within that, and you'll see it. There are, I think, at least two, maybe even three different versions in this video. Also, uh, no motherboard has been considered for this unless they meet the following criteria. They have to have at least two M.2 NVMEs, ideally more. They have to have at least six SATA ports, whether that is utilizing an SFF fan out or utilizing multiple traditional SATA ports. More often, we're talking about a lot more than six. They have to have at least two Ethernet ports, but again, ideally more and ideally at least 2.5 GBE. There has to be at least two PCIe upgrade slots, one time 16, because that's one of the major reasons people do go for uh, ATX motherboards. It has to be ECC support in one form or another. That has to be native or at least in, uh, with memory included with the system. And more important than anything, they've got to be available now. And trust me, whether it is that you have spent hours on part picker going through your local IT specialist, trust me, finding a NAS motherboard in ATX is significantly harder than you might think. Finally, this is going to be something of a culture shock for those of you coming off the back of other videos that I've done using MITX NAS MOBO combos. ATX motherboards are just more expensive. It's a hardware resource factor. It is generally that the market for them is a great deal broader, particularly the gamer sphere as well, but also large scale server implementation. To be aware that the pricing that we've talked about in the last 12 to 18 months, when we've talked about smaller MOBOs, that is a lot harder to come by when you jump into ATX. Another thing, with it comes to power consumption, ATX motherboards more often than not scale largely towards traditional desktop CPUs. And that's largely because mobile style CPUs are harder to buy off the shelf. That's why I talk a lot more about ITX with bundled CPUs, because a lot more of those lower TDP, lower power consumption in general CPUs are available for ITX than they are off the shelf and therefore installing in an ATX. So keep in mind that a lot of the CPUs supported on the motherboards I'm going to talk about today tend to have a higher power consumption, one in particular that I'll talk about. But let's crack on with the best NAS motherboards that I could find right now. So first up on our list is this one, the B550 MSI Tomahawk. Now this is the Mac version, and this one has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and a 1 gig port. So I'm going to start a bit of a bummer there, but I will say price-wise, it's one of the best NAS uh, ATX motherboards I could find for this video. It's also universally available in a different location. It's not the newest, released in 2020, but it is still available for sale. Now, when we look around about it, you can go through the blurry pages. What you'll find with a lot of motherboards on 
this list that are designed for high scale, high scale NAS use. They're going to be very gamer intensified. They're going to focus a lot on power and it's really hard to get away from that. But straight away, when we talk about the storage, we've got one Gen 4 times 4 M.2 NVMe. We have a secondary slot there that is a Gen 3 slot. We've also got the multiple PCIEs. To break down into more details, we can go into the official specifications there. Now, it's worth highlighting, and we'll touch more on that later on, that CPU support on this is a bit mixed because it is an older board there. Something to bear in mind, but there is ECC memory support and plenty of memory slots to play with there as well. Again, keep in mind about the chip chipset there because there are some b56 uh chipsets out there that we'll talk about later on that are worth highlighting but with a lot of pcie upgrade slots there available to it there is a sharing um the fact that we're gonna you're gonna see time and time again in this between the m2 and one of those pcie slots but this does afford for a relatively mid-grade amd nas build there at an affordable level and uh, the reviews that i found probably the most middle ground one here was pc mag they do again highlight the cpu limitations there which will limit the CPUs that you can buy right now at the end of 2024 and availability, of course. But this motherboard here is a nice affordable entrance into the world of DIY NAS building there on an ATX fashion. And with six SATA, a couple of M.2s to play with, there's good scope for growth there. It lacks a lot of the more modern polished features, I would say. A lot of the Thunderbolt 4 connectivity there or some of the beefier specs that we're going to talk about later on. But arriving at one of the most affordable motherboards on this list, if you don't include the bundle that I'm going to talk about later, it's a good little option. I was wondering about the 560 or the 660 version. I will say these do both scale up towards a third M.2 NVMe slot inside and obviously open up the door to Intel architecture. But keep in mind that does reduce the number of Ethernet ports to a single 2.5 gigabit Ethernet there on the rear. Also, I found the other versions of this motherboard harder to find, weirdly. So do keep that in mind. Arguably, for me, one of the very best motherboards on this whole video is going to be this one. It's an AS Rock. It's the IMB X1314. This motherboard is fantastic. Notwithstanding, it's three 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports there and two M.2 NVMe slots, three PCIe upgrades, and a couple of additional smaller scale M.2s for your Wi Fi cards and stuff, all included. There is lots to like here. It utilizes a standard ATX PSU uh, pin they're based in the rear of it i even found a fantastic build guide here on level one tech of a chap that put it together earlier this year and just everything is to like about this motherboard the wide cpu support the support of ecc memory just generally it is a dream atx motherboard it's not the most current or modern it's one of the few that i'm going to talk about today that wasn't supremely gamer focused and it isn't really available as any kind of bundle right now but it is available at 351 here on amazon.co.uk a little higher they're on Newegg, I will say, depending on if you want to go refurb or brand new, there are economies to be made. Uh, it has uh, a bunch of SATA connections. It's got cram loads of 10 gig USB ports there on the rear, and you can get it even cheaper on AliExpress right now. But do watch out that some of the listings on Ali for this mobile are secondhand. Ultimately, this is probably for me the best value option on today's list, because although it costs more than the previous motherboard I discussed, this one for me delivers the most on what you're going to need on your DIY NAS build with a lot of flexibility for modern components too. Now, if we want to keep things modern, we can look at this. This is the Z890 Phantom. This motherboard here, again, another big gamer-focused one, has a lot to like and a lot of modern appliances too. We could talk about Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 connectivity and Gen 5 and Gen 4 architecture, but it's just, when it comes to NAS, this ticks a lot of boxes. It's got support of ECC there. As we move down, it's got a 5 gig Ethernet port and a 2.5 gig Ethernet port there. I know neither of those are 10 gig, but you've got the PCIe scalability and you've even got Wi-Fi 7 integration built into this beautifully there with multiple PCIe slots to play with there and pricing that although not the cheapest is not the most expensive on today's list it is surprisingly competitive what you can get there are here at several versions of this motherboard keep in mind both with regards to CPU architecture as well as a lot of the extras in the Nova and non-Nova versions there but there is a lot to like about this motherboard there is going to be 
see that big trade-off in lane distribution between the M.2s and the PCIEs. So do factor in just what you're going to prioritize in your storage versus external connectivity. But nevertheless, there's a lot to like here. The CPU support at 1851 is not quite for me as good as going for a traditional 1700 LGA, but I think we can counter that with, if you are going to go far more that storage route that I just highlighted, a fantastic support of M.2, leveraging away from PCIe scalability, making this perhaps one of the best DIY flash MOBOs in ATX that you may be want to utilize in your new NAS system. It's a slightly bigger board, and definitely when it comes to cooling, you're going to have to factor in another dimension into the NAS case you install this inside. But nevertheless, this is a fantastic NAS motherboard to get hold of, and as I say competitive prices and availability pretty much all over the shop globally Now, if you want to make some serious economies and you don't mind looking at refurb, there are absolutely loads of options out there. I could have quadrupled the length of this video if I only looked at refurb or X server grade components, but I wanted to include one entry to kind of represent all of them, and that's this one. Now, this is utilizing an old CPU, not just slightly old, but proper old but this cpu although it's tdp is absolutely horrific i will say as long as you're not going to be pushing the boundaries of what you're doing in terms of power use and you want to leverage more towards storage there's a lot to like here with four 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and 10 sata connections to play with you can get this mobile on a bundle with both the cpu and the RAM included at 148 NICA. Now, with that, when we look at that CPU, again, you have to factor in the age of this CPU, and therefore, you've got to think about power consumption and less efficient components. But at 14 cores and 28 threads, this could make a really lovely scalable Proxmox server, even if that power consumption on a 24-7 utilization is going to end up costing you a little bit more than you might like. Plus, with ECC support and 40 lanes of PCIe Gen 3 architecture to play with, you've got a lot of allocation at your fingertips for the VMs in a Proxmox DIY build on this CPU. Now, there are other CPU variations out there. I mentioned this is just one example of many of motherboards like this one that have got your standard 2.5 gigabit Ethernet there. They've got a couple of M.2s on board, great PCIe scalability and great memory allocation as well. But just keep in mind, that they're all running used, potentially burned out CPUs in some cases. So be selective. This being refurbed is just the same as buying a used laptop. Serious utilization of motherboards like this one are important considerations when looking at them. Also keep in mind, the memory that it's going to arrive with is almost certainly not going to be ECC, although there is ECC memory supported on it. Chances are, the, the memory it arrives with won't be. But don't worry, because these are utilizing DDR3 or even DDR4 in some cases memory, you can get some real cheap, slower ECC memory supported for these MOBOs. How do we feel about spending real money? This is the Z790 Godlike. There is a Max version as well. And this motherboard pushing thing, pushes things up substantially. It's got seven M.2 slots available, obviously shared across the multiple PCIe slots. On top of that, it's got both 10 GBE and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet there on board with a Gen 4 and Gen 5 architecture. The hardware architecture of both solutions is similar and they do support both um, LGA 1700 Intel Gen 12, 13, and 14 CPUs there on board. There's a huge amount of scalability with a motherboard like this. Obviously, you're going to have to factor in the power consumption and using a non mobile. Uh, so uh, non-mobile CPU on this motherboard is going to be problematic. I will say pricing-wise as well, this is where we start breaking into higher than 500 NICA motherboards there. And again, that's the non-max edition. Keep that in mind there. But once again, keep in mind that the M.2s that this thing is absolutely chocker full of are distributed in an interwoven pattern with those PCIe slots there. So it really is going to be a one or the other situation. Luckily, it's got 10G natively, but that is a worthy consideration. The other thing keeping in mind, this is the only E-ATX board here. Now, E-ATX may look similar, but it's about the depth of the motherboard more than anything else. It's the same height and slot distribution as a normal ATX motherboard, but it's 
going to be deeper. So you're going to have to factor that into the cases that you go for. I believe this will fit inside the John's Boat N5. I've not got one here, unfortunately, to double check just how well it would fit inside. But you are going to have to look at pretty giant cases or even start looking at rack mount cases to really make a, you know, take advantage of a motherboard of this scale. Let's get nuts. This is one of the Threadripper MOBOs that I want to feature in today's video. This is the Asus Pro WS, the WRX80E. This motherboard is bonkers. It's got seven PCIe slots. It's got dual 10GBE. It's got three M.2 NVMe slots on board. So whether it is you're going to be looking at those PCIe slots for utilization with M.2 upgrade cards, or you just want to take advantage of the plethora of SATA connections that this board has, it's got everything going on for it. It is not cheap. You're looking at dropping a grand on something like this minimum, but with an enormous array of support of ECC memory scaling right the way up to the wazoo. And those PCIe slots opening up the door to tremendous internal and external bandwidth there. This is one of the most capable motherboards on today's list. Do keep in mind chipset considerations that are going to affect how you deploy this, whether you're going to use a combination of M.2 and the PCIe's or leverage one more than the other, but there is still a huge amount of storage configurations open to you. But once again, like any motherboard like this, it's going to come down to the CPU you choose to use. And it's an AMD socket, so, you know, you have got some good little ECC CPUs, and there are uh, server-grade processors from AMD's range out there, but as a thread ripper, keep in mind this is going to be power hungry this is designed even if you use it in a modest state to be ready to rock at a moment's notice and it's going to eat up power accordingly plus i just spotted this does support remote management there of the bios there with ikvm uh, again those two 10 gbe's are going to result in a small increase in power consumption it would have been nice if they put a low level you know out of bounds port or something like that to manage something like this but still it's a nice motherboard if incredibly expensive but there you go, those are the best ATX NAS motherboards that I could find right now at the tail end of 2024. If you've got other suggestions or MOBOs that I've not covered, let us know in the comments and we'll share them with other users. Also, there's links in the description to every single motherboard I've talked about today, and I'll add a few more to that if I can sort of check into a couple that didn't really make this list because I wanted to double check the availability globally on them, and I'll add them there in the description. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Whether you're watching this in 2024 or 2024, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic year and I'll see you next time.